Right, good morning. I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. My name is Justin Barclay. I'm here representing Rodale Institute. This is uh, Tom Kennedy. Good morning. He's here with uh, Delaware Valley University, and we're going to talk together about one of the programs that we have in partnership together, the Organic Farming Certificate Program. A little bit about myself. Like I said, I'm Justin Barclay, former United States Army captain. Uh, transitioned over to this career. I'm the, currently the Veteran Farming Program Coordinator at the Rodale Institute. So one of the reasons why, why this program, program came about was uh, several veterans came up to uh, our former executive director said they were very interested in organic farming and that there's only a handful of uh, veteran focused farming initiatives going on within the country but there was not too many on the East Coast so in partnership with the Delaware, Delaware Valley University, DelVal, they established this program. We were able to get funding through a USDA grant. Uh, we're currently just starting our second year of this grant, you know, with this particular focus on organic farming. Uh, the way our program is broken down, it is a one-year certificate program. There's a 36 total credits, 12 credits per semester. That was designed so that uh, veterans can take full advantage of their, their housing allowance by allowing them to you know, earn 12 credits per semester and get that additional extra benefit to help them out. Uh, one of the few benefits of this program is that they have rolling enrollment, which means that students can pick up this program in any of the semesters. They can start in the summer, the fall, or the spring semester. As long as you know they get their paperwork filled in on time, because at the end of the day it is a Delval. <laughs> it is a Delval program. We as Rodale, we just help them with their summer semester. As far as uh, the way the semesters are broken down, the fall semester at Delaware Valley University, they have uh, three primary classes: Introduction to Animal Science, Organic Food and Fiber, and Marketing of Horticultural Pro Products. In addition to those three classes that they have, they also have a farm practicum, which is, occurs at various farms, normally within Bucks County or within different locales that are relatively close to where the students live. Uh, with their spring semester, they transition to commercial vegetable production, principles of sustainable agriculture, and integrated pest management. And they also do an, an additional focus on farm practicum, where they spend, you know, 60, 80, 120 plus hours on different farms in the area as part of their experiential learning process, which I know is really big at, at Del Val. Uh, my main job at Rodale is I help coordinate our summer semester there. All our training occurs at our farm there at Rodale Institute in Kutztown, Pennsylvania. It's about maybe an hour and 15 minutes away from, from Doylestown, from Del Val. They take two classes up there. They take a plant health class and a soils biology class. And they have a much larger farm practicum that occurs up there where they get a, a whole wide variety of topics, everything from tractor maintenance to tractor driving to greenhouse operations, orchards, bees, grains, livestock. And the way we have the practicum scheduled is that the first six weeks or so out of the semester, they, they go through these different training pieces. And then the last six weeks of the program is open so that the students can focus on an additional thing that they like the best. If they like livestock, they can focus their last six weeks on livestock. If they like the vegetable, vegetable production, they can focus more on that particular topic. So we really keep it open to the students, you know, to focus on what they really care about and what their interests are. And other than that, that's, I have a counterpart at DelVal. She helps coordinate the practic practicums down there. Her name is uh, Emily Bowell. She's actually out recruiting for a program. And, Tom, if you have anything else you'd like to add? I'd like to just talk a little bit about how the um, program um, ties in with the veterans. Um, we're finding more and more veterans are looking for really good career-related opportunities within the Commonwealth and also throughout the nation. Uh, within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, agriculture is the number one industry. Uh, and at a national level, one out of five people, directly or indirectly, are tied into the food system. Uh, from the seed to the stomach. We as a historically agricultural school uh, have deep roots in that. Um, and so what is happening, the revolution in food and ag is taking place with a tremendous amount of growth driven by consumer demand for organic product. Uh, 
Our relationship as humans with food is changing quite drastically. Um, these new forms of ag production are coming on uh, to meet that consumer demand. Veterans are attracted to it because of the fact that they have an opportunity either to own their own farm, this is a new emerging market that they could get involved in, or go work and make a good living uh, with existing farms. Uh, as you uh, go through the program, one of the things that we've done, and it's rooted within the history of Del Val, and that's what we call practice through science or practical application. Our students are heavily involved uh, on the home campus. We have a 600 acre working farm on the home campus at Doylestown. And so part of the students' experiences with us is the fact they get that hands-on practical application that's so needed so that, that when they go out into the industry, their learning curves are a lot shorter, which gives those people that hire them an opportunity to get them into operations right away. Uh, for veterans, uh, it's also a nice vocation. Veterans are used to working long hours, and some of the active duty fellows that are here with us know what it means to work long hours. Um, and at the same time, it gives them a, a chance to really explore working close within nature. Uh, for some of our veterans who have post-traumatic stress, uh, this is a really great rehabilitative type of a vocation for them as well. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity both for uh, uh, commercial operations if they want to go into that or if they want to be an entrepreneur and create their own farm, they can do that with this certificate. The certificate has the capability also of rolling over into a degree. This program is also approved by the Veterans Administration. And so what happens with uh, our veterans when they come through, as Justin was talking about, is the fact that they can use their educational benefits to get this education. And that helps them concentrate on their work as students. <clears throat> With it being approved by the Veterans Administration, they get a housing stipulation, they get uh, book stipends and things along that line to help them finance their education. Uh, the veterans, the only thing that we ask them to do is to provide us with their certificate of eligibility from the Veterans Administration to show that they are eligible to receive their educational benefits. On the home campus, we also have a veteran and military center. It's the Janet Mannion Military and Vet Center. It was named after Janet Mannion, who was the mother of a, a, a Marine Lieutenant by the name of Travis Mannion, who was killed in Fallujah. Um, this was her way of trying to help support veterans coming back home and also support uh, the surviving members of the 9-11 uh, tragedy. So our veterans can come in, there's one place where they can go to and spend time either working with their fellow veterans or uh, some of the active duty folks. Uh, it's like a one-stop shop for them on campus. And so, and Emily's office, who couldn't be here today, is in that complex. So the veterans are looking for opportunities. As I said, that's the number one business. This is a great program because of the growth of the organic uh, farming area. Um, it's amazing to see how the veterans study so very hard. They also work very hard in the fields, uh, and that's part of their DNA from their prior service. So at the end of the day, it's a good marriage uh, between really some great folks great institution like Rodale. Rodale is renowned for the work that they've done. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go up and visit their website, it's just phenomenal what goes on on the website and everything. Uh, so at the end of the day, we're here today to talk to people also about the opportunities for career, especially in this area. Uh, I'm a prior service. I served over eight years with the Pennsylvania Army National Guard with the Associators. Uh, and then I went into business and then into the academic world. And now I'm just a good old adjunct professor teaching courses for Delbeck. So. One of the other things I'd like to introduce is, is over the past several months, fielding different phone calls from veterans that I received at Rodale, is they were interested in learning how to do organic farming, but they didn't want to go back to school. One particular gentleman, 
you know, he's a master sergeant in the special forces. He's like, I'm not going back to college. My two daughters are heading off to college. I'm not hanging out with 19 year olds to learn organic farming, but I would still like to learn how to do it. <clears throat> so we came up with some other programs and we got some additional funding through Newman's Own Foundation and some other anonymous foundations to fund training programs that are flexible, they're tailored, they're two to four months in duration to kind of let veterans get their feet wet to see if they're interested in going this whole organic farming route without jumping into a full-fledged college certificate or college program. So this is another option for interested veterans where they can come there, it's all hands-on, there's no, no classes, you know, no formal classes, there's no midterms, no finals, just a, another opportunity, another option for them to conduct their training. This also has a has a housing housing stipend and they also get a stipend for their work and for their time as well. Uh, we weren't able to make it quite as generous as the GI Bill, but it is it is pretty close. So if anyone is interested in an opportunity outside of Del Val or just wants to do two to four months of training at Rodale Institute, uh, we can be contacted at rodaleinstitute.org slash veterans. That talks about our programs there. We also have opportunities where we work with different partners throughout the nations. A farmer Veteran Coalition based out of California. They have little satellite sites all over the country. So those are other great networks that you can partner with and find out about other training opportunities if you're not interested in coming to, you know, to Pennsylvania if you want to train closer to where you live or where you're from. Yes. Whatever questions people may have. We'll be glad to try and answer. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Is there online information available about the organic farming certificate program through Rodale Delvao? Yes. Correct. Okay. Is that through the Rodale Institute.org slash veterans? Yes. You, it, it, the link there will actually take you right back to Delval because yeah. at the end of the day, it is a Delval certificate as part of their degree program. We are not a... And you can go up on the web at www.delval.edu and it will link you right in to the different programs there. And just as a disclaimer, the program is open to anyone. Right. You don't have to be a veteran to become part of this program, but this program has been especially attractive to veterans there at Del Val. Just want to make sure that, oh, I really love it, I'm not a veteran. Well, you can still jump, mm -hmm. jump right in, too. So, But veterans have, I'd say, what, 90% so far have been veterans. So. We recently had a Navy veteran, Jim Wortman, completed the program, and now he's starting his organic farming operation in Bucks County in the town called Jameson. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is Mike O'Gorman, who is the uh, director of the National Farmer Veteran Coalition. Mm -hmm. This gentleman right here. Here's your hand, Mike. Hey. Is there any other questions? So, oh, yep. So are the, um, it's a two-year degree? Is it a, a degree? Or is that it is a one-year one certificate. One-year certificate. Right. Now, several of the students have decided to enroll into a four-year degree. I believe it's in a sustainable ag degree. Yes. That uh -huh. tends to be a popular choice where they already have 36 credits towards, towards their bachelor's degree. Also, okay. so it's, it's their transfer enrollment mm -hmm. like the University of Pennsylvania or yeah. whatever the, you know, the X one. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Um, another question. Where, where did you find the... Um, um, the participants, the veterans coming, are for the most part um, first first generation on the farm. Uh, so far, I'd say a bunch have been. Now, a couple of them remarked that their grandparents had farms, yeah. but their parents did not. You know, they yeah, probably more them. similar to myself. I grew up in the suburbs, uh -huh. so they knew like you know maybe one percent of farming, but then kind of lost it, their parents weren't interested in farming, now they're kind of reconnecting, maybe it's their grandparents, maybe it's their great-grandparents, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'd say there's probably a large degree of first generation, you know, technically first generation farmers. Mm -hmm. And we've had veterans from all over the country come in. Uh, one of the uh, veterans came from Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, it goes beyond just the Commonwealth as well. Yeah. Um, two, but, si yeah, two sisters are currently there from Wisconsin right now. Do Another they lady from. No. Yeah, Delval Del is a yellow ribbon school, so whatever gaps there may be within their particular GI Bill or their funding between them and the Dominion 
Foundation, Foundation yeah. they're able to pick up those gaps. In other words, the veteran gets so much money from the uh, Veterans Administration through the Yellow Ribbon, Ribbon Program, and we take that, uh, then we cover that on our side mm -hmm. so that the veteran can once again um, take advantage of a very economically sound program. We are a regionally accredited school. Uh, some of the veterans ask about that sometimes. Are you nationally or regionally accredited? We're accredited through the Middle States Association. Um, we uh, just became a university last April, mm -hmm. and uh, we continue to try and serve those who serve us. Uh, it was the mandate of our president, Dr. Brosnan, uh, that we make sure that we take care of the veterans, and we also have a component that deals on the active duty side as well. So that's our way as an institution of saying thank you for your service. Off the Is this the Kutztown program? That's a Rodale Institute. We are we are but based in uh, in Kutztown. Yes, ma'am. We partnered with uh, Delaware Valley University. Um, with the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, mm -hmm. and we're looking. I actually handle the VA hospital in Lebanon, so oh, okay. looking at veterans that are transitioning back into the community. We do all work stuff, mm -hmm. um, employment, retraining. Mm -hmm. Do you have? Do you have you ever funded anybody through? L&I, um, labor and industry? Not so far. I've done some ex some initial explorations. I know when, when Scott Shealy had our initial right. meeting with veterans and ag, I believe it was end of September, we, right. we had laid some initial groundwork to try and make some more ties between these different organizations. Who actually gets paid? Who, or who's paid for the training? Is it Rodale or um, like... The, the program is run by... Right now we have a, we have a USDA grant that oh, is funding grant. our okay. program. The okay. program was started uh, just between DelVal and Rodale. It was yeah. really kind of small scale, but the USDA grant gave us a lot of money for, for funding and outreach so we can do a lot of these different events, make publications, go to different conferences, whether it's the Farmer and Veteran Coalition Conference out there in California, and some other events as well to do, to do some networking. So the USDA grant is right now what is funding our program. So if you have a veteran that's interested, mm -hmm. you would just refer him to your program, and he's more than likely going to be funding. Yes, and at the end of the day, he'd be funneled through uh, through DelVal. Through DelVal. At the end of the day, it, it is a DelVal program. Okay. We are not a degree granting institute there at Rodale. We just okay. provide some of the training, but all the technical VA mm -hmm. questions, Car Smith or some yeah. other individual. At if you have a veteran that's interested in it, what he needs to do is go up on the website, go to Military and Veterans Affairs. Okay. on that link that and what Justin was saying the person he wants to talk to is a Mr. Carr Smith he is the veteran certifying officer okay. and that starts the mechanism to get into the program uh, and then he'll be referred to Emily as well yep. uh, for uh, further uh, application procedures and processes and he's with Department of Veterans Affairs he is the veteran certifying officer at Delaware Valley University oh. Because one of the key steps that you want to do when you first start out is have your veteran produce his eligibility uh, letter of educational benefits from the VA. Right. And that starts the process where we can start to help the veteran uh, in his search for the educational program. If a veteran isn't eligible, for, if they've used it before, they might be an older veteran. I work at the VA. I work with formerly homeless veterans mm -hmm. or homeless veterans who average age is 52 or so. They may have exhausted, um, you know, GI Bill benefits before. What's the level of assistance for one of those veterans that might be interested that they don't have GI Bill funding? Well, I know in the before I started working at Rodale, I've been there almost a year now. About two years ago when we just started this program from the ground up, there was an individual, an individual just like that, a Vietnam era veteran. He had already exhausted his uh, veteran's benefit and they came up with a program. They allowed him to, right. he still went through at least the summer at Rodale. Right. So. Uh, you know, one of the things we try and do as an institution is to get the word out that we are military friendly. And so what happens is you'll have veterans walk in I've got this, I've got that, and we try and help build uh, a program for them to help them. Uh, and that's the other advantage of having a, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a veteran center on campus. You have a dedicated individual there 
that can listen to what their needs are, then direct them and coordinate through the other segments of the university to see what can be done to help the older vets uh, and the younger vets as well. Um, and you're going to begin to see this happen a lot with the colleges and the universities where they have begun to realize more than ever before the veterans are not your traditional 18 to 22 year old. And so they, they need that extra support system as they learn to try and navigate um, the education systems. Uh, what Justin was talking about. A lot of veterans, I'm not interested in taking English literature, but I do need more advanced education. And so that's how the, the beginning of now we're seeing the evolution of certificate programs coming forward uh, so people can get that practical application, get out there and get a meaningful job to contribute back to the, 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 themselves first and then to society as a whole. Um, so that's where the veterans need to go. And actually, just to add to that, I'm Scott Cheely with the Department of Agriculture. Um, what uh, these guys are talking about, these shorter term training courses, we see that as a trend. You know, I think that's really where we're gonna go in the future. Uh, we have a great high school agriculture, vocational agriculture program. We have 150 programs around the uh, Commonwealth. We have a great school in terms of Del Bell and Penn State, of course, providing agriculture education at the bachelor's degree level, but there's not much in between. So this whole idea of having shorter term courses that can give people certificates that they may be able to build on, and eventually, uh, again, this, this program's kind of leading the way, that could eventually be turned into an academic credential at some point or another, if the person wanted to do that. We think that's the trend for the future. So this is kind of a, this is a trend setting program, and uh, you know, we think it's a very good one, and will fit very well into what we want to do as a department as well. Plus our professors, we run orientations for our professors back at school uh, to help them begin to understand the different needs that the veteran students have that are really kind of unique compared to a traditional day student or a traditional night student. Um, so at the end of the day, uh, we commit uh, to having training sessions for our faculty uh, so that they begin to understand the dynamic of that veteran coming back into an educational environment. I mean, most of the time in the military, we always talk in acronyms. Yeah. Like, what's your MOS? Well, most of the time goes, what are you talking about? Military Occupational Specialty. So at the end of the day, with the professors, we want to make sure that they understand some of the acronyms that uh, the veterans are used to hearing uh, and help them adjust uh, making that bridge from the military life into a student and then on to uh, becoming a contributing professional uh, within the Commonwealth or in the nation. Yeah, on, on a lot of levels, it just seems like a natural fit with unemployment rates, you know, relatively higher amongst the veteran community than in general. And with the aging and the decline of farmers in general, you know, it's just kind of a, can be a very natural fit. But even if all the veterans became farmers overnight, we would still have a farmer shortage. <laughs> exactly. So there's plenty of room for everybody, but veterans can help make a dent. So. What, what are some of the um, employment opportunities um, here in the state for in agriculture? I think there's plenty of opportunities. There's plenty of opportunities because what's happening, if you go both into the retail sector and the food service sector, the restaurant, hospitality sectors, mm -hmm. there is a great more of a demand now than ever before because the consumer's driving uh, the growth of organic. Uh, if you go into major retailers throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, you will begin to see, and it's across the nation as well, but you'll see it a lot in our stores here within the Commonwealth, special designations throughout the aisles. This is organic product. It's certified by USDA. Um, the retailers also understand that that's what the consumer wants. So they're really, really interested in purchasing and acquiring those products to put into the stores. On the food service side, the chefs love this because the chefs are great experimenters. They like to take new product. They like to work with new product. And it also matches up the great trend of Consumers today want food, not just as an energy supplement, but as contributing to their overall health, mm -hmm. and organic does that. 
quite heavily. Uh, also, there's a great trend to buy local. Uh, that's significant uh, within the Commonwealth, especially when we look at the PA Preferred Program, and we also now have a new program for a veterans hometown, grown by Heroes Hometown Program. That's going to be uh, talked about later today here. Um, so yeah, there's that opportunity out there uh, to get their products sold uh, throughout the different channels. Just of speaking more generally, too, I mean, we're forecasting around 75,000 job openings in the next 10 years in agriculture and food processing. So a uh, significant number of jobs. So it's not all on farming. Farming, right. we always start there. Uh, we always need farmers. We always need uh, dairy herdsmen, a variety of other people in the agriculture production. But um, as these guys are saying, the, the broader food system, the ag, uh, food processing, the distribution system, needs people as well. So there's many, many jobs that we think broadly about agriculture. And that's one of the mandates from Secretary Redding. So Secretary Redding wants everybody to begin to understand this is a system. It's a huge system. And we have needs within that system that can be beneficial to everybody, whether they're a veteran or not, uh, to what Scott was just talking about. The ripple effect of the connections of the different supply chain members in the system is huge. Uh, once again, agriculture is Pennsylvania's number one industry. And so at the end of the day, we're looking at systems now more than ever before. So when you think about the opportunities, it's from the, well, I call it the seed to the stump. And uh, Scott has done a great job of starting to analyze where are those specific needs. <clears throat> so Pennsylvania can still be a major important player in the production of food, uh, and also to assist our retailers and our restaurants as well. And the consumer. Everything's driven by the consumer. And this is the demands that the consumer is asking for today. And I think uh, when you look at the work that's being done within the Commonwealth, we're right at the tipping point. Yep. Just and to tie in real quick with what Scott and Tom were saying, there's a whole section just down the steps here out in the main hall called Know Your Farmer. So there's definitely a big push out there to get that know who your local farmer is as far as the opportunities, whether you set up a community-supported agriculture or just try to keep, you know, supporting your local farmers. Well, thanks for coming, folks. Thank Appreciate you. it.